There are only but a few high earning industries like this around the world. And in this industry, 70% of the workforce is made up by minorities, but minorities only make up 12.5% of the top level positions. And what industry you might ask this is? It's the National Football League Professional Football, where the workforce is made up of NFL players and the top level positions is made up of NFL coaches. And when you ask many around the league of the social injustice of hiring such few minority coaches, they point to the Rooney Rule as a fix-all. But you don't have to look further than last year to see that this is, that's, that hasn't been the case and this is a problem. But before we dive into the details, let's look at the hierarchy and structure of how an NFL team is organized. Just as in a company, we have the board of directors. In the NFL, you have a general manager. And the, in the company, you have the CEO, which is quite comparable to the head coach of an NFL team. And this executive team is composed of the CMO, the CFO, is quite similar to the offensive and defensive coordinator of an NFL team. So that gets us to see, and that brings us to the Rooney Rule. The Rooney Rule suggests that an NFL team has to interview at least one minority co candidate anytime there's a head coaching vacancy. So how has that worked out in the past? You know, so last year there were eight there were eight vacancies in the NFL. All eight were filled by white candidates. Additionally, two black coaches were let go last year. One of them, Lovey Smith, who had a 10 6 record, which is quite respectable. He got a few interviews, didn't get a job. There's Rodeo Cornell, who has a vast amount of head coaching experience. He didn't get any calls for any interviews. There's Jim Caldwell, who was the offensive coordinator of the Super Bowl winning Baltimore Ravens that year. He has prior head coaching experience and he didn't get any calls for an interview. And if you look at the eight vacancies that there were last year, only three minority coaches were asked to circle around and interview for these positions, which is just a sheer lack of numbers of minority coaches getting a chance to speak in front of executives for the head coaching job. And with further investigation, you would have to go back to 2007 to see the last time there was an external hire to get a, a minority coach, an NFL coaching position, which is Mike Tomlin of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And just to give you a point of reference, the last eight coaches that were hired in 2013 were all external hires. And some might say that NFL minority coaches are not competent enough to run an NFL team. To that, I can tell you that minority coaches average 2.7 more wins a season than their white counterparts. They average 1.1 more wins during their tenure than their white counterparts. And most astonishing, they get their NFL team to the playoffs 67% of the time compared to 39% of the time of their white counterparts. Luckily that this news has not gone unnoticed, newspapers have been publishing articles, stories to raise awareness, sports radio talks have debated about this issue and how to improve it, and the NFL League Office filed a 2012 NFL Diversity Report where I got much of my statistics from to raise awareness for the league. So we, don't, so we can get more than 12.5% of coaches filled by minority um, people. So we can get so we don't have an embarrassing number of uh, minority coaches go zero for eight at landing NFL head coaching positions. Sports has always been something that has been able to be a pioneer in racial equality. And some may think that we have achieved post-racial equality in the sports world, but that's quite laughable just by the mere fact that something as a Rooney Rule exists in the first place. Thank you.